One of the biggest improvements Apple made to the iPad Pro this year was the introduction of their new mini LED liquid crystal XDR display. Chances are you've probably already heard talk about this. It basically brings improved brightness and colors via this all new display technology. But sadly, this new display is only available on the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, which we unboxed last week. Feel free to check out that video down below in the description. So what does that mean for the improvements coming to the 11 inch model? Well, it mostly has to do with performance as it now features the M1 chip, which is the new silicone processor Apple has included in its latest Macs. It's almost considered overkill, it is that powerful. Um, it's also priced at $799 or $300 less than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, so it's definitely gonna be a lot more easy to stomach in terms of price. But let's go ahead and unbox this iPad and just see how it compares. Sliding off the top of the box, we'll find the iPad Pro right on top wrapped up in some plastic. Underneath, in typical Apple fashion, we just have a pamphlet containing some paperwork and Apple stickers, and then underneath that, there's a 20-watt charging adapter with a USB-C charging cable, and that is literally it. Now, upon first impressions, the 11-inch iPad Pro, it feels noticeably thinner than its bigger brother. It measures in at just 5.9 millimeters thick compared to the 6.4 millimeter thick iPad 12.9 inch. It really just feels like the perfect size. It's only about two inches smaller, um, but those two inches do make a difference. And it really makes me question whether I need to even hold on to my 12.9 inch iPad Pro model as someone who has a 15 inch MacBook Pro and an iPhone 12 in his pocket at all times. So this 11 inch iPad Pro, it sits beautifully between the two in terms of size. But let's talk about that display. Technically speaking, it is the same exact display as the 2020 iPad Pro. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, it still features a 265 pixel per inch index, uh, a super smooth 120 hertz refresh rate that's better than all the newest iPhones. It has HDR10 and Dolby Vision support and True Tone support. It really just makes upgrading from a 2020 iPad less interesting or appealing. In all honesty though, this display, it still looks excellent. Uh, viewing angles are strong and colors appear rich and vibrant. If you consume a ton of movies and TV shows, maybe in your bedroom or something, you might wanna opt in for the mini LED display, but this panel here, I don't think is gonna really disappoint you. And what's almost guaranteed to not disappoint you is performance, since this iPad is packing the new M1 chip that features 50% faster CPU performance over last year's iPad processor and graphic performance is 40% faster. There's even a new 16 core neural engine just making things buttery smooth. So in a nutshell, you're gonna be able to run any app that you throw at it, any app on the app store, it's just gonna run buttery smooth. And I think one of the reasons why Apple put so much power in here to begin with was so it can support professional apps that are being developed for the iPad, like the Final Cut and Logic, which is just really exciting. Those apps typically are reserved for Macintosh computers. Another noteworthy addition uh, this year is support for Thunderbolt and USB 4. So you'll be able to transfer data between external devices a lot faster than before. And you can power up to a 6K external display all via this one USB-C port here. In addition, there's a new 12 megapixel selfie camera to improve your video stills. It's being paired with Apple's center stage feature that zooms in on you when you move around on a video call. Always make sure you're in focus. And this works with FaceTime as well as third-party apps like Zoom and Cisco WebEx. That's really cool. Uh, and if you desire, you can add 5G with the cellular model. That is also new this year. But um, other than that, we're really looking at pretty much the same core features. We have similar battery life as the previous model. It has largely the same design and it supports the same first-party accessories that the iPad Pro 2020 models support. I would say there's less of a reason to upgrade from a 2020 model, but if you have an iPad that's several years old, I think this 11 inch 2021 iPad Pro will surely impress. The M1 chip is, it's no joke and will easily last you several years before needing to even think about upgrading. With that said guys, let me know your thoughts on the 11 inch iPad Pro 2021 model down below in the comments. As always, I'm BoHD from Slash.TV. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you right back here in the next one. See ya.